Okay, so part two of this little um, generator saga is um, gonna be carburetor cleaning because I'm getting no fuel coming down through that carburetor tank. The fuel is on and I'm getting nothing at all. So I need to um, distinguish what's going on uh, with this machine. Um, I guess it's just gonna be a simple carburetor clean. So let's get my D walt and make it a bit quicker where I can. This weather is still giving it some. It's actually the same day, so it's just be a two part, two part video. It's gonna take me a little while to get this carburetor clean. I've got a sticky feeling uh, it's gonna be gunked right up. But it fired straight up, eh? Got a working generator. Well, yeah, an engine side to it anyway. So one flap there to come off. Oh, there's another one hidden behind here. There's two, two nuts to come off. And that one looks a bit small. So two of them. That comes off. Air breather pipe comes off. All comes off. That's good. Right, let's get a set of forceps, which I have to hand. And I'll remove the fuel line. So I'm convinced it's not actually going to be the fuel line. It's going to be a problem. Move that up. I'm going to clamp that off first up here. I've got a fuel. I've got a fuel um, shut off as well, which I'm going to activate. And I'm going to remove this fuel line. Now, I did, as I said, I did pay a bit more than what I would normally pay for um, one of these, but this is a slightly bigger engine. Um, I need to get a little tub in just so I can see what sort of fuel we are getting out of the fuel line. And I have a little Chinese takeaway tub which probably had chicken chow mein or something very similar in it. Let's turn that fuel line on. We're not getting a great deal coming out of that fuel line are we? So it could be a problem with the actual on off switch. It's gunked up. So let me remove the fuel line very carefully. <clears throat> and let me get a bit of WD-40 spray or carb cleaner. And I'll put it straight up into the hole. The fuel line is turned off at the moment, so I'll turn it back on. Give me a quick blast of that. I'm getting not a lot through there. There it goes. Okay, let's put a bit more fuel in this machine. holds quite a bit of fuel to be fair and uh, it was very very low so let's put a fair old amount in just to help it out need any more than that to run. Let's uh, put that fuel line back on and almost put a little petrol all over this machine. Let's see what happens now. Yeah we've got a bit of a flow, not a great deal though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut that back off. Take that off. I'll get me a compressor and I'm going to fire some stuff straight up inside that hole um, just to try and compress try and try and prove what's going on in there. Because if I take the tank with this valve off, um, I'm going to have to um, tip it up on its side and what have you. So let me get me a compressor, come back and just go on and compress that hole quickly. Okay, just compress that hole up a touch. And what I'm, what I'm doing, I just want to compress this, air, this, this fuel pipe up as well in case there's some gunk in there. Now, you're gonna get a bit more fuel coming through there now, which is good. I was getting nothing through it originally. Yeah, nice flow now, just what you want. It's not restrictive, that uh, keep the carburetor running nice. Okay, so that's that, that's good. 
So before going to carburetor clean mode, um, I'm gonna put that back onto here, loosely, and I wanna undo this little tiny, oh, one of my windows has popped open. I wanna undo this little tiny breather pipe here, this flood. I need to get a bit of wind damage in this storm that's coming. And I now want to turn the fuel on. I should now get fuel coming out of here. That's the idea. That's a trick. Nothing. Nothing at all. Let's take that fuel line back off again. Oh, come on, baby. Yeah, I've got fuel coming through. Plenty of fuel, so I've got a carburetor issue. So carburetor come off then, slide it off. Uh, what we've got going on here, we've got a uh, bit of a, a spring job going on, which has got to come off. So that comes off of there first. That, well, that's nice, that comes straight off. That comes straight off. Good, go on carburetor, on the bench, see how we get on. Okay, back on the bench, one carburetor. Let's just uh, undo that, turn it down a smidge. I want to break this, I don't have a spare. See what's occurring. I've got a varnishy smell to it, which is what I can I can smell straight away. Yeah, it's a bit clogged up. It's, it's not horrendous. The O-ring is not in brilliant condition either, but uh, it's not it's not the worst carb in the world. <clears throat> But it's definitely going to need a clean. Um, I suspect just a manual clean for this one, and I can't get the float off. Already stuck at one first hurdle, and I think what it is is a valve pin it is impinging me. Why don't I want to come off there? Yeah, that's what it is. The little tiny um, needle there it goes. The little needle is actually stuck. I think that's the problem. Which would make sense because I was getting no fuel in. So let's try and get hold of that little tiny jobby. There it goes. Defunct on it. Let's have that out. That can't stay in there. That's a little tiny jet as well, just in here. Oh, I got this weather. Everything's gonna fall apart, baby. Now, that tube doesn't come out of here, out of this carburetor, that stays in. Um, I'm pretty certain of that, pretty certain. I will try and get it out, but I'm pretty sure that stays in. Yeah, it does. <coughs> so that'd be carb cleaner down through there. I've uh, got a little tiny one here, which is your mixture. Let's wind that in, that's about quarter two. Let's put it to quarter two. One. One and a half. Make a little note of that. With my old pen. There it is. Oop. One and a half. So that can come out. <clears throat> Whoa, the old shed's rocking and rolling today. Uh, that can go screwed all the way in, which is about uh, 10 2. 1, 2, 3, 3 and a half. That'll go to. I just found leave that one in at 3 and a half, and then I can get this jet out. If it'll come. Yep, yeah, it will. We'll pass that. Uh, Put it past that little tiny screw though, is a question. Mm, it might do. 
Yeah, it will do. A little bit of top we've got there. Right, that one comes out. Okay, so the carburetor's now been stripped to where it needs to be. <coughs> I'm using WD-40 initially. Uh, this is a problem we had in this hole just here, which is now running. It'll all be air compressed. So that we can guarantee to get fuel through. Every single hole, every single orifice will have something blown through it. Just so we can guarantee we are getting maximum amount of fuel delivery. That's the important one on there. So every, every single hole, give it a squirt, give it an air compress. To make sure we're getting all the fuel um, orifices clean and where we need to be. So give us 10 minutes, I'm gonna come back once I've given it all a good blast through, <coughs> blast through, air compress, all that sort of good stuff. I'll come back, I've got all these little tiny jets here to clean up as well, all that sort of good stuff. Once I've done it, I'll come back, we'll put it back together, and then we'll go from there. Okay, carburetor all now been rebuilt, put back together. <coughs> it was a bit dirty, um, it wasn't as bad as what I've had, but um, I'm hoping just a quick clean will do. The float was particularly sticky, uh, but now that's now running, as it should do, it wasn't even moving inside the tank and I have a blown test as well so let's get it on the machine and um, try and fit it and then uh, we'll uh, reassemble and see if we can't fire this little girl up. Okay back over on the machine and what we're going to do we're going to put this on first that's a carburetor that's on the two holes provided that sits on governor arm to go on just make notes and take photographs of where stuff goes, people. It's that, it's that easy. You can't really go wrong once you take photographs, but I've been working with this machine now for about 10, 15 minutes, and I can sort of see where it goes. <coughs> That's all working, as it should do. Um, I can now connect the fuel line back up onto the machine, and I've got the, um, the valve out of the bottom of the float, so I'll turn the fuel on, and we should now get fuel coming out the bottom of a carburetor, like so, which is lovely. That works. I have made one slight mistake, and that is I have put the, um, the flooding part of the carburetor on the bowl, just around the wrong side. So I'm gonna take the, um, the bowl back off very quickly. I just want to rotate it round so that I can actually get access to that to that um, that little tiny chamber, a uh, little tiny screw. So just undo that ever so slightly. And I'll spin that all the way around, all the way around like so, so that this little tiny valve is uh, is displayed. Now don't do this up too tight because the last one I did, I stripped. So just nick it up, hand tight, <coughs> should be enough, and turn the fuel back on again now, you can see the fuel come out of here, that's where it wants to be. And then we can now put this one back in. So, do that up. Have a little screwdriver. All the way up, turn the fuel back on, and now we shouldn't get any leaks unless the O-ring is actually um, broken. No leaks. Turn the fuel back off. Fuel clips can go back on. So now we actually have a, a working carburetor. We get, we're getting fuel down to where it needs to get down to. Whereas before, we certainly weren't. I need to just check my shed in the morning because I've got, I'm gonna have some storm damage to it. I know I am. These winds are quite bad. There's worse than what I thought they were gonna be. Um, I've already got one window just popped through, but my windows weren't, weren't brilliant, so. Okay, that's that. Let me move you guys just out of the way slightly. Just round to here. I don't know if you can hear that wind. I certainly can. 
Um, right, this goes back on. Now look, this is what I'm saying about this choke. Now on this, um, on this little um, cover here, look, it quite clearly says choke on that way, choke off that way. But if you come round, so choke is on over there and off over there, but when I activate the choke, that's choke on. So that's weird. Strange. Upside down, upside down and back to front. Um, right, this one can go on next. It's got a little air breather hose that goes in the back. <coughs> that one goes on to there. Come on, baby. Work with me. That goes on to there. And one little air breather hose that goes in the back of this. That all goes on to that lovely. <coughs> and we've got two 10 mils. Which hold on the carburetor uh, housing. First one goes on there. I may have to do a bit of carburetor tuning yet. We shall see. It would be nice to just fire straight up. That's what I'm looking for. But it may not. But it's got half a chance now, right? We've had it fired on carburetor spray which is a good thing. We've had it uh, pulling over, so that's all good. That goes on. We've got a little tiny uh, metal gauze. I'm assuming that goes that way on there like that, something. A little filter. That goes into there. And then we've got this thing here. As I say, the choke says on that way. I reckon someone's actually Put an upside down or something, I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. Normally, choke flap closed, choke on. Hey? That's the normal way, isn't it? All right, it goes on to there. One of them goes on to there. Yeah, we'll be buying a new pull cord assembly for it if I can get one. This is working quite well at the minute, but that, that will that will fray. It won't last long. I might even try and move it around this way a bit so that it's coming straight up. I might even try that as well, just to minimise the fraying. Right, that's all on. That's all on. That's all done. So I'm not going to buy it until I know um, it's actually going to run. Okie dokie. Glimidex. I need to spend a whole day down here at some point and have a, have a darn good tidy. I get machines. I think the problem is I get so busy. There's a lot of machines in at the moment, and uh, it's a bit of a pickle to keep up with the, with the mess I'm making. But right, fuel on. Um, let's go for a fire up, shall we? Fuel's on. We've got fuel in the tank. That's on. I'm going to choke it that way. Is what I'm going to do. I think that's choke on. And then we'll see what happens. Um, I might go for a straight turn off to make sure that that stop button is actually working. And then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Right, so choke's on, no primer, none of that old, old muck, and uh, let's see what happens. Made a noise. 
I think something's come loose in here. I think mate has been in here and something's come loose. But one of the fins has got a little bit of a mark on it of the cooling fins. I have noticed that. Um, I think he might have tried to wind in screws onto there and try to pull it over. So I might have to take all this shrouding off at some point just to have an inspection. Hey ho, look, guess what? That fired up and that doesn't it run sweet actually. So that's now off choke, I believe. Oh, turn it on, might help. There we go. super happy so I am super happy because I didn't think that was going to run at first um, full cord working quite well uh, for what it is however that's not going to last five minutes um, I might move it around this way just so I get a better pull on it I might try and remove that um, so that I can um, put it onto here so it's a bit less uh, friction involved in it but uh, it should be okay I'm quite excited I am secretly quite happy I don't like starting off a choke, but it's only just, just been run up probably the first time in about a year. I think it's in a year it's not been run for. It likes, it likes the old choke. Yeah, well happy. All right, fuel's off. Good, good. Bomb shakalala, she's running. I thought I bought a bit of a lemon there, but actually it runs pretty well and uh, no fuel leaks, um, all good to go. Powers a little hand grinder as well. Um, it will power multiple things, I think. It's uh, not, not a bad little machine, that is. Um, I paid a bit more money than what I normally would for that, uh, only because it looked to be in relatively good condition and the bloke really did seem to be um, assuring me that all it was was a pull cord. Yeah, it was. However, it, I've been reading back on my comments where, where I bought it off of a different um, selling site that are normally on, and uh, he said, pull cord broke, it's been sat in his shed for a year collecting dust. Boom, that, that, that's why sort of fuel is bad. Um, I've got to do a little bit of a service on it before it does sell off. I've got to get a new pull cord for it. I should take the old gut, I'll take the guts out of that pull cord and put it back in the Honda when I get a new one. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, if it's your first time you're watching Mixed Mails, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, that'll give you a notification to say I've released another video or I'm on my Saturday night weekly live stream. Um, comments down below about the choke button uh, on our flap. Um, flap should be closed right for choke, it's back to front on there. Um, I don't know, so if it is, I might just take that sticker off. Um, that's that. Amazon wishes also down in the comment section in the pinned comment, um, the top one, if you want to buy me some spare, spare tools, spare parts, bits and pieces, filters and spark plugs, it's there, feel free. I'm deeply appreciative of anyone that buys me anything from my channel. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Mixed Mouse very, very soon. Look after yourself, stay safe. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take her easy.